Good afternoon and welcome to the City Club of Cleveland. My name is Jan Roller and I am President of the Board of Trustees of the Club. By all accounts, 2010 will prove to be another intense, important and exciting year in the Buckeye State. As in the past, much attention has been focused here on our political scene. And then we hope your attention will be, will be focused here at the City Club, where we plan to host forums, discussions, and debates on the upcoming political races. Today, we will kick off the contest with the heads of the two major political parties. And here to moderate today's forum is Mark Namick, political reporter and columnist of the Cleveland Plain Dealer. Mark began, began at the PD's Lorraine County Bureau in 2000 and became the paper's political writer in 2001. He has covered local and state races and the presidential campaigns in Ohio in 2004 and 2008. He previously worked for three weekly newspapers, including Cleveland Scene and Philadelphia's City Paper. Mark, thanks for being here, and please start us off. Thank you, Jan, uh, especially for the neutral words. Uh, I can assure you those are kinder than I received from the followers on Cleveland.com or the <laughs> evening voicemail greetings that show up in the morning. Uh, I mention that because kind words should be the theme of today's uh, event because the two speakers today have nothing but praise for one another and each other's <laughs> party politics and candidates. Let's take Kevin, uh, not seated on my immediate right. Uh, Kevin DeWine uh, is the Ohio Republican Party chairman who last year replaced longtime GOP boss from this area, Bob Bennett. Kevin recently described Governor Ted Strickland's running mate Yvette McGee-Brown, a former judge and president of the Center of Child and Family Advocacy at Nationwide Children's Hospital, as an uninspiring social worker who was at best, uh, was the best that Governor Strickland could come up with after he was turned down by others. So you can feel the goodwill. You know where we're headed in 2010. Then there's Kevin's counterpart, uh, Chris Redfern, who took control of the party in 2005. The following year, he rode the wave of anti-incumbent resentment, though I'm not sure, Chris, you're going to catch that same it, wave I? this year. Had nothing to do with it. Chris recently described the GOP gubernatorial candidate, John Kasich's running mate, that's our state auditor, Mary Taylor, <coughs> simply as Ohio's Sarah Palin. And he meant it in the nicest way. <laughs> right. Right. I did. Beyond their frequent understated comments, the two have a lot in common. Both are young, as you can see. Uh, both are parents, Younger. though that's done nothing to mellow them. They are hyper-competitive, and they both come from the Ohio legislature, which allows them occasionally to back up their rhetoric with some substance and policy understanding. <laughs> they were educated at Ohio universities, as you saw probably from the program. Uh, Chris is a former greenhouse builder from the Lake Erie Islands graduate of Bowling Green, two degrees there. Uh, he was the minority leader uh, in the Ohio House, and he uh, was the youngest county commissioner. These are just basic bio stuff I wanted to filter in there. Kevin, who is not one of U.S. Senator Mike DeWine's many children, <laughs> but he is related, uh, graduated from the University of Dayton, my alma mater, and received an MBA from Wright State University, and he's from uh, Fairborn, Ohio. Both uh, are national players uh, within their parties, thanks in part to Ohio's uh, importance in every presidential election. Uh, Ohio, as you may know, has only been wrong twice in the last 108 years in picking a president, so there's a lot on their shoulders uh, in just a couple more years. Uh, they share one more common challenge, uh, and we're going to talk about this a bit more in a moment. Neither of them can keep their respective candidates in their seats topic we're going to explore a bit. So audience members, grip your chairs. Uh, I don't think we have an order of questions, so I think I'll, I'll start with one for both of you. Um, and I think it's uh, give you a little chance to sort of handicap your, your ticket. And uh, Chris, why don't we start with you. Tell us who's running and tell us who you think is going to have the hardest time winning. Well, first, uh, thank you for the introduction, uh, Mark. It's, it's not often Kevin and I can go in just anywhere and be insulted uh, <laughs> by, by somebody of your character. And, uh, That's right. But rest assured, when you lose your job at the Plain Dealer, you can apply uh, somewhere. We won't recommend you, but you, <laughs> nonetheless. Um, 
it's going to be an exciting cycle. Democrat, Republican, Independent, uh, Governor Strickland, and uh, Lieutenant Governor candidate Yvette McGee-Brown uh, are running at the top of the ticket. Our senatorial candidates include Jennifer Bruner, the Secretary of State, and Lee Fisher, the present Lieutenant Governor. Our Secretary of State candidate, the only announced candidate, is Mary Ellen O'Shaughnessy. She's presently the Fra Franklin County Clerk of Courts. Kevin Boyce, the State Treasurer. Rich Cordray, the Attorney General. David Pepper, a Hamilton County Commissioner down in Cincinnati, is running for State Auditor. We also have great members of Congress running for re-election uh, all across the state, including uh, right here in Cuyahoga County, Dennis Kucinich and Marsha Fudge, but we also have John Bocherry and Steve Driehaus, Mary Jo Kilroy. They'll probably attract most of the attention electorally in tougher districts, but uh, I feel quite optimistic about our chances in retaining our majority in the Congress with our great delegation. Slim majority in the State House. I expect to retain that majority. Uh, we believe that we'll be able to pick up a couple of seats right here in Northeast Ohio, perhaps one right here, two in Cuyahoga County. And uh, we feel good about our chances for the first time in a long time, picking up more than one seat in the State Senate. Down ticket at every level, the County Commission and Auditor seats are up, as Kevin Dwine and I know. Those are important because you build a very strong field team. Uh, I'm looking forward to your questions, and uh, we'll always appreciate the invitation to come back to the City Club, and uh, I respect and appreciate the history and tradition here in this important gathering. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for, uh, to each and every one of you for, for coming out and spending some time with us this afternoon and putting up with Chris and I for the better part of the next hour, and Mark uh, and his silly little insults of both of us. We appreciate that. Uh, even if you are a UD guy, I may never let you forget that. Uh, the, uh, it's not lost on Chris and I the, the importance, the significance, and the relevance of the, of the City Club. And uh, we appreciate the opportunity and the offer to, to come here and talk with all of you. And we appreciate the form that you give our candidates. And, uh, and so thank you for that, that long, rich tradition uh, here in Cleveland. Uh, look, when we look at 2010, I, you know, I often say there's three things you have to have to win elections. You, you have to have a, a good, solid infrastructure. And that's what, that's what county parties do. That's what state parties do. That's why our Cuyahoga County Chairman Rob Frost is here today. And that's what Rob is building and we're building in, in 87 uh, other counties across the state. Y you have to have a good political environment. And uh, I think uh, as we sit here on February 5th or 4th or whatever this is, uh, you know, I think the, the political environment today is, is a, a, a far different environment than what we saw exactly 365 days ago. And, and I think we, we see a political environment that looks favorable for Republicans. It looks harsh for incumbents. I think it's more harsh for incumbents than, than maybe it is anti-Democrat, but it's, it's a favorable environment for Republicans, candidly, because there's more Democrat incumbents. Uh, so that's okay. Uh, the, the third thing you have to have, you have to have good candidates. And, uh, and I have said it before and I will say again and argue, uh, that we have the strongest slate of candidates on the GOP side from top to bottom that we fielded in better than a generation. When you look at, at, at Rob Portman and John Kasich and John Husted when, and Mary Taylor on the Kasich campaign and, and the rest of the ticket on down, when you look at Jim Renacci in the 16th and Steve Stivers in the 15th, uh, Steve Shabbat down in the 1st Congressional District, uh, when you look at the quality of the candidates that uh, Leader Batchelder from down in Medina County is recruiting for the House, uh, it is going to be a, a, a great has a potential to be a great year for the Republican Party because of a solid infrastructure, because of a, a good political environment created by Democrats uh, for the Republicans. Uh, but just as importantly, we have as great a slate of candidates from top to bottom as we've seen in a very long time. Uh, I expect, uh, I expect we'll, we'll pick up the Ohio House. I expect, we'll, I expect we'll pick up two, if not three, maybe four congressional seats in Ohio. Uh, I expect Rob Portman uh, John Kasich and the rest of our gang to, uh, to sweep uh, the, the constitutional offices and for uh, the election day to, in, in, uh, in 2010 in November uh, to be a great ringing uh, victory of uh, a day of victory for the Republican Party. 